Hello and welcome back to the Student Hub Live induction event for the Open University Law School and the Open University Business School. This session is all about time management, a key issue. And I know that there are a lot of students out there right now who are studying full time, um, a lot of people out there who are carers, a lot of people who are out there who are on their own. So there's a lot of variables that could come uh, into play with your very well organized study plans. Now, I have some people here who hopefully can answer your questions. Um, I have uh, Frank Farley from the student support team, um, Dasha Vicky McDonald, who has studied 120 credits a year for the last two years with a baby, so she knows a thing or two. Uh, and Sam Thorne, uh, who's currently um, doing a master's in creative writing. So lots and lots of different issues here. Now, we've got some widgets that we'd like you to um, fill out at home. So we'd like to know about whether or not you anticipate that time management is going to be an issue for you. So for those of you who've just joined us, you'll see these interactive widgets or tools. Just click on the one, um, click on the option that applies to you, yes or no, and then return it and your results will submit. We've also got a scale, so we'd like to know about the extent to which internal factors um, could impact on your time and also external factors, because as we know, there are these two things going on in tandem, which is the whole balancing act of time management. And the best place or time for me to study is, now this is a word cloud, there are three things, so we're limited by this three thingness. So if you can only think of one or two things, or you might want to say where you like to study or when, just chuck those on and put a full stop in the other box, and then your results will submit into a wonderful, colourful graph. OK, so we wanted to focus on planning and prioritising. Now, there's loads of advice which we've sort of taken from the OU systems um, into how we recommend you do this. But what would you guys say about planning and prioritising? Dasha, I'm going to start with you just because um, I think that with 120 credits a year and a baby, you must have had a very, you know, a lot of experience planning. How did you go about doing it? I think for me, it was about um, opening my box. So at, at the time when I was studying, we still received materials uh, through the uh, door. Um, looking at the study guide, uh, looking at um, where the key dates are, when my TMAs are due, um, see if there are any overlaps. And then just making sure that I allow lots of time to study. So I'd go in, um, my study place was at work, so I'd go in for a few hours before for work and I'd study and then um, you know I'd go back to work, drop my child off at the nursery, go to work, go home, um, pick up my child, have dinner and then go back to work and study again. So I'd say just don't underestimate how much time you need and to start with be a little bit um, generous with the time and then once you got into routine um, that should help as well so i think for me review the dates uh, be generous with the time and not, and find out where you're going to be studying make sure that it, it's all set up you must have been shattered i mean all of that going on how did you sort of separate the time because we all know that an hour in the morning well for me anyway an hour in the morning is is twice as valuable as an hour at 11 o'clock at night when I can do sort of less good things. How did you focus on that side of things in terms of the quality of the time that you could dedicate? Um, I think for me it was all about the task in hand. Um, so um, in the morning it was good for planning. Um, so I'd really look at um, the TMA, an essay that I have to write. and. Um, I basically had to isolate myself, so I'd uh, switch my intranet off, you know, and I'd just kind of really start writing. And sometimes it's not about writing something amazing straight away. It's just uh, doing a bit of a brain dump. So and 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 just going with the flow, um, and then actually, you know, looking back and then fi uh, fine tuning your work. And um, yes, you're absolutely right, Karen. That at night time it might be that the energy levels are a bit lower. Um, so. So maybe allow, one should allow more time in the morning to do kind of creative work or most of the writing. But I think as long as you schedule the study slots in, that will be of huge help to the students. No, absolutely. And I think it's one of these things as well where there's always something to do, even if it's writing a reference list or if it's, um, you know, highlighting your process and content words on your TMA. There's always something you can do if you've got a little bit of time to keep the ball rolling. But Sam, I wanted to ask you about this because for creative writing in particular, um, <laughs> you can't always schedule your time when you're feeling particularly good. Um, mm. And I know that there are issues with writer's block and all sorts of things going on with that. And even, you know, students studying law and business with things that might be a little bit more concrete will have different values.
values on their time. How, yeah. how do you find planning and prioritising, bearing in mind those complexities? Um, well, I, I try to focus on the tasks that are hardest. So put aside quality time for your TMA writing. So um, if you know your TMA needs to be handed in on a Thursday, for example, try and block out the, the weekend before so that you can spend a few hours during the weekend um, having some quality study time. Um, the sort of the less high intensity study, I kind of tend to, I do tend to try and fit in in the evening. So it's kind of after the kids have gone to bed, yeah. um, just a couple of hours, just just keeping things uh, yeah. ticking over. Exactly, it's keeping moving, isn't it? Frank, yeah. you, you um, must have a lot of students phoning in um, with difficulty sometimes prioritising. And I know from talking to some of your colleagues that one of the things that you guys and the student support team are so helpful with is just sort of saying, let's just break this down and let's focus on one problem at a time and sort of try to think about what is the most important thing. What are things that you find students most commonly worry about with prioritising and planning? Um, I guess it's probably just initially finding the eight to 16 hours a week and it's being realistic and, and realising you do need those eight to 16 hours to keep on top of, of the reading list. And um, But sometimes personal circumstance can come into play as well for students and you can't really plan or forecast uh, when personal circumstance can come in. So that can sometimes affect your planning. But um, I think as long as you initially plan uh, to, to really dedicate eight to 16 hours a week from the start, then you can afford to be flexible, hopefully, um, if personal circumstance arise, but I think you need to be very realistic and, and do allocate eight to 16 hours a week. Well, it's a weird thing, this eight to 16 hour thing, because often you think, that's fine, I can do that on a Sunday. I have a Sunday, which is 24 hours, so not a problem at all. I'll give a third of that to myself. And we all know that it's not quite like that. But you've got this really helpful um, grid. I'll show you guys at home, actually. Um, and uh, there's all these... Uh, there are all these um, things that you can find on the Help Centre, um, but this is one of them. And one of the activities that we encourage students to do is to think, when am I going to actually um, filter uh, my time? How am I going to actually plan throughout the week when I've got? And then also, how can I review it? Because sometimes you think, right, OK, so I've got all that in here, but actually then I realise that, that Monday's is never a good sort of time. So it's about learning from things that are going on. What advice do you give students about working with these sorts of grids and things where we've got things like travelling time, shopping, exercise, health? Because those are all things that keep us ticking over. So we need to plan them in as well as study. Yeah, I mean, it sounds quite elementary, um, you know, accounting for things like shopping. And But I think the challenge with, with OU studies, especially if you've got a full-time job or family commitments, yeah. it's um, finding those 8 to 16 hours a week. So this yeah. really does help you sort of realistically look at your, your activities throughout the week and even the day yeah. and how much time you, you can fit in. But sometimes it's even if you've got an assignment, say, due in at the weekend and, and you're a bit behind on your reading lists, it's yeah. where are you going to find that time to sort of, I mean, even carry your books around with you perhaps and find the or 10 minutes here and there. And sometimes you can use it as a plan B, but this is a really useful tool. There's a lot of uh, useful tools on the, on the help centre, but this one particularly allows you to really look at your study in a practical level and, and your life in a practical level and try and balance the two. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's one of those things as well that once you start thinking, we, in an earlier session we were talking about online shopping, and I mean, that has revolutionised my life because I don't now have to drag children around um, dealing with blackmail and various complexities of whether or not we need eight different types of cereal. I can just order it online and that frees up some time. So there are sort of various techniques and things that you can use to claw back time. Um, but also you mentioned sort of picking up things on the go. And I wonder if you you guys have any experience of you know a lot of these materials are available on pdfs we can use the formats in different ways um i often you know will take a task out when i take my daughter swimming and i'll sort of say right i've got half an hour here and i'm going to read this paper or i'm going to do this and this this do you ever break down things so that you can use that dead time for something sam you're nodding yeah. well <laughs> i remember like lots of experience yeah well i remember a holiday in france uh, a couple of years ago and just like long motorway drives and um, my wife did the driving for a few hours and I just sat in the passenger seat sort of reading because I had an EMA to hand in about um, a week or so later. So that was kind of dead time for me and I, I just uh, use it to do a bit of work. So it's, it's finding those funny little pockets of time where you can fit something in, yeah. But then that, as I was saying earlier, that doesn't really work for when you've got to write your TMA or your EMA, then you need the sort of more quality time with a desk and a computer in front of you. 
Excellent. We asked you at home um, what you thought in terms of the best time or place to study us. And let's see what you had to say about that. So a lot of people uh, say in the evening, I guess because people are, are working maybe, um, or maybe they've got time. But the beach, I think, is a particularly nice place to study <laughs> if you can take all your things there. Um, and uh, what sorts of things you're doing is often uh, listening to music. Um, OK, so lots of various different times and some places in terms of dining room tables, uh, desk and bedroom, coffee shop, etc. Um, when under pressure, I mean, that's always a good time for me. <laughs> I don't define to meet a deadline. Um, but lots of, of spaces and things. OK, so let's let's think about sort of how we, we sort of conceptualise this time and space for study. A lot of people will literally have their books and that is their OU space. Some people have a hoodie or a jumper and they sort of carve out that space in their minds instead of on on a nice desk with a board and with nice stationery all around them. How important is that for time management? Do you need to be in that sort of mindset where you can say, I just need this book and this highlighter and a pen right now. And is that the best way of doing a task with short amount of time? Or do you need to say, I need to actually be in my space at home with everything around me or I can't do it? Well, okay. It's a personal yeah. thing because I think there might be different opinions on this. I think like you touched on this, Sam. I think um, there's certain tasks you probably will uh, need to, to plan, uh, plan and uh, have your resources available. But I think um, there certainly are some tasks where you, you don't need those resources. And as long as you've got your PDFs, uh, yeah, you can do a bit of study uh, anywhere. But um, certainly definitely do plan for those um, tasks and activities where you do need your resources. But um, yeah. um, I would say that um, you also need a a very strong support network around you because actually I'm one of those people who needs a space. Um, so for me, I, I went back to work and that was quiet space for me where I could study and really focus on a task in hand. Um, and during that time, my husband would take my child out. And so um, I, I didn't need to worry about anything. I think whatever we, this, however we like to study, um, we just need to do a bit of planning. So whether it's a coffee shop, um, we just I need to make sure that there is uh, Wi-Fi available or whether it's at home, um, I'd say just get everything ready, the post-it notes, highlighters, schedules, um, and have a good plan in place. We asked our students whether they thought that uh, time management would be an issue and 73% think that it will be an issue for them, unsurprisingly. We also asked about extent to which internal factors um, could impact. And again, those were sort of towards the higher end of the scale, um, which leads me to my next thing that, that I wanted to ask you, Sam, about, because you sort of mentioned this earlier before, and I wanted to ask about study goals and how important it was to sort of have an end point in mind in terms of what you were trying to achieve. Because sometimes we can sit down with a book or a TMA and think, I'm going to do my my absolute best yeah. but perhaps when there is time and there are certain things we need to be mindful of our expectations mm -hmm. what's your advice for students about sort of thinking about what they're actually trying to do in terms of what they're trying to submit and what they're expecting to get for that in terms of grades maybe um i think i would echo what dasha said earlier about that first draft just get it down don't worry too much about the quality of it um you'll hopefully you'll have been taking good notes all the way through it in the lead up to the TMA. I think um, when, when you, you know, five weeks before your TMA, have a look at the actual question and have that question in front of you as you're sort of going through the books and making notes. And then your notes will be tailored to be able to answer the TMA more easily. But when it actually comes time to write the TMA, yeah, just don't worry about the quality, just get that first draft down, hopefully do it a few days before you need to hand it in. And then you've got maybe four or five evenings after that where you can start um, editing it and polishing it up, filling in your references, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And this is in an ideal world where we've got time planned in. But then yeah. when these external factors can happen, mm -hmm. someone goes to hospital, a child is sick, and all of a sudden that nice time that we carved out in that week is gone. Yeah. We might sort of need to be mindful of our expectations. And sometimes I'll say to my students, well, what did you expect to get? You've had three hours to do this. You've had a sick mother. Um, you haven't been able to sleep. 
why did you think you could get a distinction? Because it's not a reflection on your ability. You've had all this stuff going on. And so, you know, people can be very hard on themselves sometimes. And also, we know that the TMAs are weighted. So at level one, it doesn't really matter in terms of your overall degree. It's a nice sort of way to get set up. And often, they're different. But Frank, tell me, do students know about the sort of way that, that they're being assessed? And is it important if things are sort of um, getting a bit too much to sort of take a step back and think, actually, how important is this? TMA in terms of my overall degree and in terms of the waiting maybe for this module? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, sometimes with, with some modules, the way the, the assessment strategy is designed, uh, if you contact the, the student support team, we can hopefully try and find a strategy and, and a way. If you, if you are uh, very far behind uh, with some modules, you've uh, there may be six TMAs, for example, but you don't necessarily need to complete all six TMAs, depending on how you've performed with your other TMAs. So sometimes it's not always possible, but certainly if you fall behind, sometimes contacting your student support team, we can help sort of devise a strategy to get you back on track, whether it be extra tutor support or, or just re replanning and refocusing certain parts of the module. But yeah, certainly we always like to try and find a strategy if we can to support students when they're finding difficulties. Excellent. So this leads us to our next point about being flexible and realistic, which is something that we encourage students to do. So tell us about the realistic side, I think, which is possibly more difficult than the flexible <laughs> side. <laughs> Who'd like to come in on that? Sam, has realistic. it been important to be realistic in terms, I mean, when, you, when you're studying at the moment, do you submit something and think, yeah, that's a 70 percenter, or do you think, mm -hmm. I'll be lucky if I pass that. Um, how realistic are you with, with the quality of work that, that you're able to put in? Because obviously there are times when you can do better or, you know, not so good yeah. work. I th well, I think my attitude with assignments is just to do your very best in the time that you have available. And if that's, if for whatever reason you've only got five hours or three hours to do that TMA, just do your best and, and get it in. I mean, I... I, try, I do try and plan ahead around those TMAs to make sure that I do have lots of time. Um, but whereas with the rest of the, the study, um, I'm probably a bit naughty in that I'm trying to do the, the bare minimum of, you know, get through, re, get through the, the reading and activities as quickly as I can and really focus my quality time on the, on the assignments. That's naughty. I think that's very <laughs> clever and that's exactly what I would do <laughs> and what I do do. But it is important because I think so often, you know, students get this lovely study calendar with all these activities and things. And really, I mean, from my perspective, I see the challenge of time management as identifying what really matters and where you can most effectively spend your time, bearing in mind you don't have an infinite amount of time. And you're probably not going to do 100% of that module in the detail that you think you should. Mm -hmm. And actually, we don't expect that as the Open University. We expect you to do your assignments. We expect you to read what you can. Your degree is yours. You get out of it what you put yeah. in. It's your stuff, isn't it? And you can always come back and look at things afterwards. There's some lovely chat going on um, about mind maps, about routines, and you're all being incredibly helpful. And also talking about what you wear when you're studying as well, so things to get comfy in. And I know clothes can be a really important thing, and it's very difficult to study if you're not feeling comfortable, so I really get that. And you're also comparing coffee drinking. What's that all about? Uh, we're just talk talking about some of our study tips. And Mohan said, uh, I study in 20 to 30 minute bursts and have a small break where I have some tea. And it seems that a lot of people agree with this. So uh, Mohan's already on 15 cups of tea a day. And, uh, <laughs> Me Melanie and uh, Anne-Marie are neck and neck on their fourth cup of coffee of today. So... Uh, I, th I think we've got some heats going on with this. <laughs> but uh, it's great seeing all these study tips. With what we're wearing, Libby's decided we should have a pyjama party. And I think uh, <laughs> we can have a pillow site, fight outside. There's some cushions upstairs. I'd like to see you I in think. your pyjamas. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll have to do that. But uh, yeah, lots of, lots of great study tips here. I like all of these. And um, printing off our uh, grades and like successes and putting them on the wall, I think that's really good too, because... Mm. Well, everyone gets in a bit of rut with studying, so uh, yeah, just having some motivation. Is, There's uh, a lot of questions about how to get motivated, mm. and so I thought there was a great idea about printing off the certificates and putting them yeah. up and sharing with each other. Be proud, share with mm. your friends and family, and get them excited too. But there are lots of good tips on here, and there's a lot of stationary love going on as well. Yes. A lot of discussion about 
pretty stationary and highlighters and mm. having things around you to help you that you feel comfortable. Yes, I think uh, someone suggested that we need a support group because uh, sometimes <laughs> the stationary love can get a bit out of hand. Yes, which, uh, yeah. If you see my cupboard, perhaps, yes, maybe yes. I'll join that support group. Tell me who's been banned uh, by her family for buying stationery. Oh, I believe it was at Danielle. Uh, Yes, I think she said she had like over 400 pens and uh, 20 <laughs> notebooks and uh, we, we like uh, having pristine notebooks so we can't use them but we do still need them of course. <laughs> And also we had some comments on about reading Adobe uh, reading Adobe text and we talked about some software that you can download so that you can have those texts read to you. So if you're in the car and you don't have someone like your wife driving, you can have, you're driving yourself, you can still listen. So there are some tips and tricks for, the software apps for both all kinds of phones, I don't want to say any names, but for all kinds of phones you can get apps that you can download to convert your text into readers so that you can listen. Mm. We were saying about uh, studying on the bus in all sorts of places. So uh, I think, if I just find the comment, because I think it sums up. So Anne-Marie says uh, she's starting a job which is working with the NHS from nine till five. So uh, fitting everything around and having all these extra apps and support and uh, all these uh, extra things that the OU provides really helps in fitting study around. I like um, downloading the podcasts that I had with my modules and means I can just listen to them every, anywhere when I get a spare minute as well. If you go to the main student home site, under links there's a software download and you get, can get the text-free text-to-speech software there. I think that might revolutionise my life. I've never <laughs> heard of that before, but I'm really excited by that. Um, and the stationery and things, you know, it's really, really important to feel ahead. Um, I wonder if we can just sort of finish um, by talking about motivation, um, because we've, we've pretty much covered a lot of things. But in terms of getting motivated, there's a deadline <laughs> and imminent doom uh, if you don't complete uh, your assignment by that date. But what other things hold you throughout your studying that keep you motivated when maybe you think, I can't do this, it's too hard? Um, I think for me it was uh, attending tutorials and talking to my peers. Um, that that was a, an absolute must. And you get so many amazing tips from your tutors as well. And also when um, the um, you know when I had difficulties or personal circumstances um, changed for me um, uh, to have a chat uh, with a, with a tutor uh, because you can. It, you you get to know your tutor um, and you feel like that you can speak to them openly. So that's very important. So I'd say don't wait um, and speak, um, attend tutorials and speak to, to your tutor. And Sam, what about you? Um, I think that's good advice. And also use um, the other students in your, in your group. Um, you know, trouble shared, trouble halved and all that. So um, I quite often get involved in, you know, forum chat or whatever before TMA where everyone's kind of sharing their issues with trying to meet the deadline. Um, there are Facebook groups that you can join as well. So I think you definitely use your tutors, your student support team uh, and, your, and the other students who are going through that learning journey with you. And Frank, finally, we, we sort of mentioned falling behind and the support that the SST can give in terms of helping prioritise and make plans and things. But sometimes this does happen. And whilst everyone's really super excited and, and, and conscientious right now, it can happen that people can fall behind. What should they do um, if they do fall behind in their studies? Uh, I mean, always contact your tutor first to see if there's anything that can be done there, any flexibility with, with perhaps an extension. Yeah. Uh, if not, always contact the student support team as well. There's there's lots of strategies that we, we again, can try and um, sort of support our students with, whether it be uh, the assessment strategy of the module or just generally trying to um, claw back some time. But we would always uh, recommend if you do fall really behind, uh, you know, contact your tutor, contact us, we can maybe see if we can get an extension and then you can regroup and, and replan and, and get to where you need to be again. But these things do happen. So. I, I just want to show um, everybody um, one of your priority matrix, which I love, which actually helped me the other day when I was really, really busy. Um, and I ended up doing things that I thought could be crossed off my to-do list. But actually, I realised that they were not important things. Um, so we've got this priority matrix, um, which is about what you need to do first, do next, do later or not to do. And sometimes when there is so much stuff going on, it can be really helpful to maybe sort of start sectioning some of the, the tasks in these lists because again you know there are certain things that you could do later such as maybe additional reading that's not related to the assignment. Yeah I mean 
I guess, again, it all comes back to your original planning. Uh, there's some things you may not need to do. There's some things that you may need to do. There's some things you need to put more time into. But a lot of the, I always find that, you know, your, your piece of work at the end is only as strong as the, the amount of time you're prepared to put in or put into your, your resources and your reading. But the, yeah, when you fall behind, there is often always a way to try and um, to try and catch up and it's just contacting your tutor and your student support team. Hopefully we can find a strategy for you. I don't know how it's possible, but we always manage to find time to uh, do the things that don't really need doing. <laughs> I think which is why procrastination is, is possibly such a common You're OU problem. To the internet, don't you sometimes, if you're at your, at your computer, just yes, by default. Yes, I just yeah. must do this right now. <laughs> Disconnected. That's what I used to do. I really would dis disconnect my internet when I needed to write. Yeah, yeah. yeah turn no, phone. And that's a very really good idea because you can't then be um, uh, distracted when your email and, and things are off. Um, so one of the ways I think that's really evident uh, is this obsession with stationery right now because um, Sarita's been banned from buying any stationery um, and Anne's family are getting quite annoyed with her for buying more but Danielle has ordered some new highlighters who are in the post um, <laughs> waiting for her and Zoe says that uh, they should set up a stationery support group um, which, <laughs> which I, think, I think maybe would be in the lower echelons of that matrix but you know nonetheless it's an important thing and stationery can really really help in fact I have a colleague who's coming along tomorrow we're doing a session um, at our Student Hub Live boot camp on note taking and she's got these amazing post-it notes. So um, come along if you want to talk about reading, writing and note-taking uh, with us tomorrow. OK, so um, Sam and Dasha and Frank, thank you so much for joining us in this session. You've given us some really useful advice. But most importantly, you guys on the chat have been sharing so many useful ideas. Where we can, we'll put up those links um, that uh, we've been talking about on the resources page of the website. So do check that out later. Um, and if you've got any other things to share as well, do let us know. You can either put those in the chat, you can email email us studenthub at open.ac.uk or you can put something up on Twitter and our hashtag is studenthublive17. So do let us know what things, apps, tools, techniques and stationery help you stay on track with your studies and we can get a nice list together that you can all share and that'll go up on the website very soon. Right, our next uh, video is Jamie actually doing our virtual reality app for the law school um, and then we're going to come back um, for our next session in a few minutes um, where we're going to be uh, finding out what a sight for sore eyes has to do with plagiarism. We'll see you in a few minutes.